Hello and welcome. This is Kathleen Lovito, and I'll be your host for today's webinar, Five Tax Tips Every Military Family Needs to Know. Our presenter today is John Slajanowski, Relationship Manager with AFMA Wealth Management and Trust. Before we begin, here's a quick background on the organization. This webinar series is brought to you by AFMA Wealth Management and Trust. Our mission is to be the premier provider of financial planning, investment management, and trust services to the American Armed Forces community. AFMA Wealth Management and Trust is a fully owned subsidiary of AFMA. AFMA has proudly served America's Armed Forces since 1879. AFMA is a nonprofit, tax exempt 501c23 member owned mutual aid association offering life insurance to all branches of the U.S. Armed Forces and their families. Also, a few quick disclaimers before we begin. This presentation is educational, is for general information only, and is not specific investment, legal, or tax advice for any individual. Do not rely on this presentation alone to guide your investment management decisions. Since each situation is unique, your needs for financial services will differ. For individual service advice, please contact us directly. We produce this webinar series in-house with our own professional staff as a service to our members to help them better understand the resources available to them. We have highlighted here two distinct characteristics that separate AFMA Wealth Management and Trust from other service providers. One, our fiduciary standard, which requires us to always act in our clients' best interests. And two, we exclusively serve the US Armed Forces community. So without further ado, I will turn it over to John to begin the presentation. Thank you, Kathleen. Let's admit it, US income taxes are complicated and confusing. <laughs> Our progressive income tax system has evolved over many decades and can be quite frustrating even to the average citizen, even more so to our active duty military and veterans who have more important missions to accomplish than staying abreast of every change to the tax code. In this presentation, I'll discuss five ways in which you can improve your tax situation. Of course, your tax situation is unique. These tips are not necessarily applicable to everyone. Please seek advice from a certified financial planner or a licensed tax professional before you implement any of these strategies. Now let's go on into more detail for each of these five areas you see listed. First off, let's keep the big picture in mind. There are legal and illegal ways to minimize taxes. Obviously, we are encouraging the legal methods. Our country's legislature has written the tax code to encourage certain behaviors, which translate to legal incentives that reduce your taxes. For example, the government wants people to save for retirement. So there are favorable tax treatments for the various types of retirement savings vehicles. However, not all retirement accounts have the same tax treatment. They each have their own rules. The government prefers that you contribute to an employer sponsored plan, such as a 401k or a TSP. So the limits associated with employer plans are more generous than individual retirement arrangements, more commonly known as an IRA. Other allowable tax incentives include raising children and dependents. There is a generous child tax credit and owning a home through the ability to deduct mortgage interests. These are completely legal ways to reduce your taxes. On the other hand, avoid the illegal ways to reduce your taxes. The IRS will eventually find you and the repercussions could be serious. Some of the biggest red flags for illegal tax avidity include not reporting all your income and taking deductions that you aren't qualified for. If you have a side hustle, you have to claim that income. To claim a dependent, there are specific dependency criteria so don't claim someone who doesn't qualify. Home office deductions are another sensitive area. Even if you were working from home over the past year, 
you can to talk to home office that isn't exclusively used for business purposes. As I mentioned in a previous slide, the tax law provides favorable treatment for contributions to qualified retirement plans. The first we will discuss is an employer-sponsored plan, such as a 401k or 4013. And for those of you who are in the military or government employed, the Thrift Savings Plan or TSP. The Savers Credit or the Retirement Savings Contribution Credit is a lesser known, highly advantageous tax credit that the IRS offers. It's an incentive for low and moderate income taxpayers to make retirement contributions to an IRA, 401k, 403b, or any other IRS recognized retirement account. The individual credit can be as high as $1,000 off your tax bill or $2,000 for a married couple filing jointly. Employer-sponsored plans allow you to defer up to $19,500 of your regular salary each year. The amount you defer is not considered income for your annual income tax calculation. The more you contribute each year, the lower your, tax in your income tax will be. However, when you do retire, all distributions from this type of a retirement plan will be fully taxed, but hopefully, you will be in a lower tax bracket in retirement. For those of us who are 50 years or older, the tax code allows an annual catch-up contribution of an additional $6,500 per year. To encourage participation in the workplace plan, most employers will provide a matching contribution of several percentage of your salary, even if you can't afford to contribute up to the annual limits you should at least contribute enough to qualify for the employer's matching contribution. This is additional money from your employer that you don't want to leave on the table. For active duty military, reservists and guard personnel, the government offers the Thrift Savings Plan or TSP. Federal employees also have a slightly different TSP available to them. TSP is now part of the Blended Retirement System, or BRS, and has similar features as a 401k plan. The annual contribution limits are the same as previously described for a 401k. A nice feature of TSP is that it has two components, a pre-tax or traditional account and a post-tax or Roth account. A service member can defer their salary into either type of account, but the combination cannot exceed the annual limit of $19,500. Those funds deferred to the traditional account will receive favorable tax treatment in the year contributed, the tax-free contribution, while those funds deferred into the Roth account will not receive a tax deduction in the current year. All future growth in the Roth account will never be taxed, and distributions in retirement will be tax-free. The new blended retirement system automatically enrolls service members in the TSP with an initial salary deferral of 3% of base pay, which can be changed based on the individual written election. Further, after two years of service, the government will provide up to a 4% matching contribution to those who continue to defer their salary into TSP. Another type of retirement savings vehicle is the Individual Retirement Arrangement, or IRA. Each year, an individual may contribute up to $6,000 of pre-tax earnings into a traditional IRA. For those who are over 50 years old, an additional catch-up of $1,000 is permitted. This contribution is pre-tax, so the amount contributed won't be included in that year's gross income. However, upon retirement, when, in, when withdrawals are made from a traditional IRA, the entire distribution will be taxed as ordinary income. The contribution limits for a Roth IRA are the same. 
However, the contribution is with post-tax dollars, meaning that there is no tax break in the year the contribution is made, but all funds in the Roth IRA will grow tax-free. So you won't be taxed on a distribution from a Roth when you're in retirement. Not everyone can contribute to an IRA. There are maximum adjusted gross income limits for both types. With respect to a traditional IRA, income limits are further adjusted based on whether you have a workplace retirement plan. For an IRA, retirement age is considered 59 and a half years old. So if you withdraw prior to this age, which is considered an early withdrawal, there is a 10% penalty in addition to whatever income taxes will be due on the amount withdrawn. There are some exceptions to this rule, such as for a first time home buyer or a qualified education expense. There is a bit more flexibility with a Roth IRA you, if you have held the account for more than five years. If this time requirement is met, you can withdraw your contributions penalty free at any time, but not the growth in the account. Although the government encourages the legal means to reduce your taxes, Uncle Sam really does want you to collect the proper amount of tax each year in a timely manner. Fees and interest will be charged if you fail to file your taxes by the required deadline or if you fail to pay the full amount of taxes due. In the next few slides, we'll go over some of the more common trouble areas that could cause you to pay extra. Each year, there is a tax filing deadline. It is generally April 15th. It is best to complete your filing by that deadline. However, if for some reason you can't get it all together and meet that deadline, you must file for an extension by April 15th. If you miss the tax filing deadline, there's a penalty of up to 5% per month on the amount of taxes due. As part of the government's response to the COVID crisis last year, the deadline for filing 2019 taxes was automatically extended. However, this is not the case for 2020, and currently the deadline is still set for April 15th, 2021. There are a host of different penalties associated with income taxes, but there are a few common mistakes. As previously mentioned, failure to file an annual income tax return by the required deadline is most common. If you file on time, but fail to pay your tax liability in full by the due date, you may be subject to interest and penalties. If you are a traditional employee and have your taxes automatically deducted, if your paycheck withdrawals are significantly below your annual tax liability, you could be penalized. If you pay your taxes, but the check bounces, you may be assessed a penalty as well. If you underpay your taxes for whatever reason, the IRS will charge you interest on the unpaid amount at the standard government interest rate. For those with self-employment or 1099 income, taxes are not automatically withheld from your income. You must file a quarterly tax report and pay estimated taxes. If you underpay, there is a penalty. Be especially careful and fire, file a quarterly tax estimate. This way you can avoid surprises at the end of the year and avoid any penalties for underpayment. Now, for those of you who have reached retirement age, the IRS isn't done collecting taxes from you. Previously, 70 years old and 70 and a half years old, and now at age 72, once you reach this age, you are required to take distributions from a traditional IRA and workplace plan, such as 401ks and TSP. This uh, withdrawal is known as an RMD, or Required Minimum Distribution. If you fail to take the full amount of the RMD, there is a whopping 50% penalty on the amount not taken. It is best to file your taxes by the annual deadline. If you can't, 
then follow the extension requests. Military personnel have a little bit more leeway with respect to following the tax return, but there are steps that must be taken to keep out of trouble. An automatic extension will be granted if the service member applies for an automatic extension before the due date. If you are stationed outside the United States, you qualify for an automatic two-month extension. To receive this extension, the service member must attach a statement to their return explaining the situation and how they are qualified for an extension. If you can't follow your return within the two months, you can request up to another four-month extension. While serving in a combat zone or contingency operation, an automatic extension can be granted for following your return. This deadline is extended to 180 days after leaving the eligible area or after that area is no longer designated a combat zone or after your operation is no longer considered a contingency operation. You can also receive an extension if you are hospitalized outside the United States because of injuries sustained in a combat zone or hazardous duty area. Note, even if you do file an extension and you owe taxes, you will be charged interest from the date the payment was originally due if you do not make a tax payment by the original tax filing deadline. Active duty personnel encounter unique living situations and therefore are offered, uh, therefore are afforded some additional benefits when it comes to income taxes. Not all military compensation is taxable. Base pay, bonuses, and incentive pay is fully taxable. However, most allowances such as BAH and BAS are not taxed. For those deployed to a combat zone, combat pay is not taxed and neither is a reenlistment bonus if the reenlistment occurs while deployed to a combat zone. Most out-of-pocket uniform, travel, and moving expenses can be deducted within certain limits. Further, not all states impose their own income tax. And for those that do, many states offer exclusions from state taxes to active duty military personnel. Our federal income tax system is what is known as a progressive system. There isn't one flat tax rate, but rather the tax rate progresses to higher amounts as one's income increases. The more you earn, the higher percentage of tax is paid on your income. With some careful planning, you can take advantage of this peculiar rate structure by grouping certain expenses, deductions, and or income into one tax year. One way to do this is to group deductions into the same tax year in order to exceed the standard deduction limit. For example, if you give to charity, make donations all in the same tax year instead of spreading them out over several tax years. If possible, prepay mortgage interest in order to take a larger mortgage interest deduction. Or if you anticipate large out-of-pocket medical expenses, you could make payments in one tax year in order to reach the 7.5% AGI threshold for medical deductions. If possible, you could defer income into a later tax year and reduce your gross income, which might allow you to take advantage of group deductions and a lower marginal tax rate. These techniques, although legal, are all a bit tricky it is prudent to consult a tax professional before attempting any of them. In conclusion, it is best to be smart when it comes to paying taxes. Pay your fair share, but don't overpay if you don't have to. There are steps one can take to optimize your unique tax situation. One big tax advantage that all workers have is the ability to contribute to a retirement plan. These provide tax advantages in both the current year and in the future. Be aware of the special rules that apply to the active duty military and take advantage of them if you can. Follow the rules and file on time to avoid late fees, penalties, and interest. 
Of course, don't go it alone. Get professional help. Sound professional advice and even a comprehensive financial plan will help you develop a solid and efficient tax strategy over many years and into retirement. Give us a call at AFMA Wealth Management and Trust to talk about your specific situation. AFMA Wealth Management and Trust is here to help our military and veteran community reach their financial goals. We offer a free portfolio review that will assess your retirement holdings and compare them with your risk tolerance. This is a no obligation assessment and will let you see if there are any mismatches in your asset allocation and make recommendations to where you may be better invested. Again, this is a complimentary service that we offer to our military and veteran community. It may help give you some peace of mind concerning your retirement plans. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, John, for that informative presentation. If you have any questions or would like more information, feel free to reach out to John directly through the information presented here on the slide. And for general information, feel free to visit afma.com wealth. Thank you again for joining us today and we look forward to our next opportunity to serve you.